I don't think anyone who has been to Glendalough was ever disappointed. I've yet to meet someone who was disappointed in going to Glendalough. I don't think they exist in this world, they do. They're few and far between. Because, folks, Glendalough, it's one of those areas in Ireland, and I suppose indeed the world, that's uh, where the awe and the beauty of nature is so raw. Uh, and one just can't not be but spellbound by the glacial valley in Glendalough. And of course, it's the same place where that ancient glacial uh, collides with the past of this country, where we produced saintly men and women by the bucket load, to say the least. And it's a powerful example of exactly that. And today, folks, we're obviously giving God thanks for St. Kevin and his witness, one of our most revered saints in this island. And most of what we know about St. Kevin comes from what was written about him about 600 years after the man died. So you can imagine lots of legends, and lots of all sorts of really colorful stories built up around this guy 600 years after his death. Um, I suppose those writings, everybody, they're, 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 they're supposed to encourage faith and devotion rather than a factual day-by-day uh, -day blow account of St. Kevin. Now, whenever I go to Glendalough, and particularly that, that beautiful place in the upper lake where you can see St. Kevin's um, cell, the little hole in the rock, which is about 30 feet up off the water. Now, when I go there, I always get the jitters. For the simple reason is I don't like deep water. I terrify a deep water. And every time I stand on those rocks in front of that place, the Loch Ness Monster comes to my head. Every time, without fail, I'm always thinking of a bloody serpent or something making its way through the water that's going to pull me into it. I just had this fear of, of that type of thing. I know I'm not the only one, but it's definitely one of my fears. And I was only reading about him the other day when I actually realized, I didn't realize until recently that apparently St. Kevin, he fought a monster in that lake uh, at one stage. Really cool little story I never really knew of, but of course it's probably one of those legends. And I really think, folks, it probably represents more often than not Kevin exercising the, the valley of Glendalough from the pagan past. I mean, even his cell in the rock, it's thought to be a Bronze Age burial tomb, which I think is pretty amazing, to say the least. But I have to say, it's really cool, really cool to hear that Kevin was possibly ordained a priest in Tala, in Kilimana, to be precise. And I think my understanding is that Kilimana, it actually means cell of the monks. It's a huge link we have here in Tala to that great ecclesiastical past of this country. Um, but of course, it's what he did in Glendalough, it's where his fame really shines. And folks, very simply, Kevin shut out the world. The noise of the world, I'm talking about. You know, to see God in the silence of his heart and the silence of nature. And we all know that famous pose, which is often attributed to him, where he's kind of shaped like a cross like that, and the hand holding out where the legend of the blackbird nested in his hand, and he stayed there in prayer until the, the eggs hatched and the little fellas they flew away. I know that's, more, that's only really a legend, but folks, there's truly something important about this guy's example, and particularly in the times we live in, the importance of drowning out useless noise really seriously drowning out useless noise. Our world and our church, it's full of noise, absolutely packed to the rafters with noise. Our liturgies have become really, really noisy as well. I think, folks, there has been a genuine effort in silencing God's voice in this world, and even in our churches, and particularly our own lives as well. I mean, at the moment, you notice our church, we're, we're, we're obsessed with jobs, jump around like frogs to this, that, and the other, like, like a ping pong ball the whole time. All the while, we're missing the wood from the trees. And like if you notice, the, the huge obsession at the moment with yoga, uh, Zen, meditation, and the over-the-top worship of nature. Um, but there are people who are looking for genuine calm in their lives, looking to quieten down. A very good thing to seek, to say the least. And that's why you see young people, they're drawn to adventures in far-off countries, looking for a more quieter way of living while still having everything on the tap, to say, say the least. Life has become so stressful, really stressful. All these smart devices are supposed to make our lives easier. They're doing the opposite. Life is manic. So many people are exhausted. And that's not good. Genuinely exhausted from life. And these are symptoms of all sorts of serious issues. But one of the issues is that our lives are far too noisy. We're seeking calm and peace the whole time. Because we're not finding it in our own lives the world 
and few people are able to find it in our churches because of all the noise. In here, folks, we come to shut up, listen to God's word, and listen to the prayer of the Mass, the prayer of the church, and to be still in Christ's presence. For me, the most fruitful moments in my life have been either sitting, puffing the pipe at home in the garden, listen to the birds singing in a summer's morning, or the heavy rain at home, in the wood at home, it's great. Or it's kneeling down, or sitting down in front of the Eucharist in the house across the way, and not once to utter a single word. I just shut up. I stare and listen for Christ. That's it. It's really simple. Oh my God, the effect is extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. Because folks, it's, we all know, every one of us, we all know, silence is where we get to know both God and ourselves. And that beautiful poem by Seamus Heaney about St. Kevin and the Blackbird, where he said, when Kevin was in times of prayer, and this is how Seamus Heaney describes what's happening there. He says, in that position of prayer to St. Kevin, it's finding himself linked into the network of eternal life. That's it. What a beautiful line, folks, that truly encapsulates what St. Kevin is about, and very much what all of us are supposed to be pulled into in many respects. St. Kevin, in his radical asceticism, you know, he carved out a way of encountering God, people, in, in, in the most profound and simple way, through the worship. And it wasn't through the worship of nature, but by using creation, God's beautiful gift to all of us in this world, to quieten his life, so that God's voice could fill his beautiful soul. And in the end, everybody, it's only the voice of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, who feeds the heart and feeds the soul. It's with nourishment, fulfillment, peace, and calm. And I know everyone, his choice of life is not something all of us is possible for. We can all just get up, pack up, and leave and go into a, a hole in the ground. <laughs> it doesn't work like that, as we know. Um, but folks, we have the liturgy. We have this sacred space, our churches. Every day we come in and we close the doors to the noise of the world. Switch off the phones. Calm down. Let's not be worrying, folks, when we come into a place like this about the news. Let's not worry about what Theresa Magoo and Tom Barley are doing to the house up the road. Don't need to worry about that. Let's not bother talking about that stuff. I mean, we can chat after our prayer here, folks, after our worship of Christ, until our jaws fall off afterwards. Absolutely. And I would urge all of us, folks, I suppose, in the times we live in, to make a little better effort at halting the chatting, the talking. Instead, let these places become an oasis of prayer and silence before the Almighty. And as a result, I believe that these places become far more attractive. I think, in the end, St. Kevin's greatest lesson, everyone, is that in seeking holiness, intimacy with God through silence, but feeds our hearts and our souls, fueling us and filling us with the fuel to eternal life. May St. Kevin of Glendalough pray for us.